Just press the button. So now it's recording and now it's transmitting live. So, hi everyone. Uh, we are here. Hey! Hello! <laughs> How are you, Tori? Good. How are you? So, we are here directly from Java One uh, in San Francisco. So, this is 2016, and we are here at the Java Hub. Woohoo! Woo yes, this is the Java Hub is this, is this big meeting place where we have the coolest people on earth, right? <laughs> right here. Yes. You know, I can see open source developers, Java developers, uh, um, JCP. What? No, I don't see any JavaScript developer here. <laughs> Do I? Is there? I don't know. I see JavaScript group leaders over there from all over the place. Yes. Okay. All right. And I'm here with one of the, the amazing people from, the, from all these events. And it's one of the persons that actually had uh, the courage of, you know, showing who he really, really is, wearing this doctor um, outfit, right? <laughs> so I'm here with Stuart Marks, and he works on OpenJDK. Uh, he's part of the Oracle team that works on OpenJDK. But much more important than this, he is Dr. Deprecator. That's right. Hi, Stuart. Thanks hey, very Bruno, much for being here you? with us. Glad to be here. Okay, excellent. So Stuart, uh, right before we, 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 we came here on stage, we were talking a little bit about uh, your career, uh -huh. you know, how you started Sun and all the cool stuff that you did, how you worked with James Gosling and everything. Can you, can you tell us a little bit how you got involved with Java itself? How I got involved with Java. Well, I had been working at Sun for a long time on different things, but uh, Sun had, a lot of companies have, have pretty, pretty easy ways to transfers among, among projects. Okay. And so I had been working on some other stuff and I decided, well, I needed to, I needed to find a new job, so let's look around inside of Sun. And uh, some of my friends were working on this uh, on this cool thing, which turned out to be Java ME. Oh, cool! So I talked to them. They brought me in for an interview, and I transferred over. And uh, yeah, so I worked on Java ME from 1999 to 2000. I don't know, 2005 or so. All right. Yeah. So there's a really a lot of activity, a lot of cool stuff going on at that time. Yeah. So you're you're actually uh, at the t at at the, the the Java team when Java was open source then, because Java was open source in 2005, right? Yeah. Now so the th I did the the Java SE JDK stuff was was a sep I, I hadn't been working on that at that time. Okay. But I did work on the open sourcing of Java ME. Oh, cool. Which right. is out there. Remember, I don't know if anybody remembers the Phone ME project. The Phone ME project. Yeah, that's, that's really really cool. That's yes. out there on Java.net, which is going to go away sometime. I don't know what the date is. Yeah, it's somewhere. Yeah. yeah. So it's out there still. If anybody wants to grab a copy of it. Okay. Cool. All right. So. Uh, now you just mentioned one thing very very important. You know we are we are here at one at the premier uh, Java developers conference in the world, right? And so uh, people that are here at, at Java One are of course our developers that are interested in improving their careers because otherwise mm -hmm. if you're not you know, interested in improving your career, why you could come for an event, right? Yeah. Now you said that you actually searched for a different job inside your own company, right? That's so right. So you you went out. Uh, why 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 were you looking for something? It was boring. Or you know you you need some challenge. Why do you decide to to, to look for a different job inside your, com your, your well, company? Well, okay, so we don't have enough time to no, go no, just the whole like story. yeah, okay, uh, right. But the the basic part of it was there had been some reorgs, and my team was my, a, actually I was running a team. I was working on an electronic commerce project. Uh huh. Um, oh, the Java electronic commerce no, framework. No, 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 no. This no? was okay. this was this was actually independent of that. All right. But okay. then it was one of these things where. It was difficult because we had some modest success, but it, it, it started to become clear that it wasn't really going to go anywhere. Uh -huh. And then my team got reorged. Actually, my team was broken up, and we got reorged into different things. And, and essentially, we were told to find new jobs anyway in, in a different organization. And it's like, well, why not, why not look elsewhere as well? Right, OK. All right, but because because a lot of developers are going through this, right? You know, yeah. they're either working on boring projects or or the project they're working on doesn't look like it's going to go, going to go anywhere. So do you think that the fact that you went out and you searched for a different thing and you, you you challenged yourself to go look for something was that really important for your career? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it was a, it was a I. When I look back, actually, during that time in, in the first 
first 10 or 15 years of my career, I think my mistake was actually staying in the same place for too long. Oh, okay. Interesting. And so, so that, was, that was something where I actually came to, and I've done this a, a couple times, although mm -hmm. I en ended up staying in Sun and then Oracle. So, uh -huh. so in one sense, I've been in the same job, but in another right. sense, I've actively decided to seek out different things that, that were more to my liking to, to further my career. And I think, I think that was something that was a, it was a growth experience for me mm -hmm. where I said, instead of just bumbling along and saying, oh, I'm, th I'm not liking this anymore, I made an explicit decision, okay, well, if, if I'm in this situation that I don't like, it's up to me to do something about it. So Excellent. I can either stay here and like it better, or actually what I tended to do was try to fix it, which sometimes works, uh -huh. but sometimes you're in a position where you can't fix it. Right. And the realization that I came to is, you know, if the organization around you, if your management, you know, if they want certain things to happen and that's not to your liking, you can either live with that or you can decide for yourself to go somewhere else. Right. Excellent. And, and I think that's really nice to see because a lot of us work on large companies and uh, it's nice to see that actually you don't need to leave your job or, or go, you know, just you, you can actually look interesting projects inside your own organization then. Yeah, I think Sun was very good about that. I think Oracle is too. In fact, mm -hmm. my, my most recent transfer into the JDK group okay. was after the af after the acquisition uh -huh. of Sun by Oracle. So that was a it was an internal Oracle transfer. Okay. So yeah, I think that that is an advantage that that big companies quite frankly, don't pay enough attention to, but, uh -huh. but having internal transfer processes is, is, is very important. I, I think it's an important retention thing for big companies. Right. And it's something that, you know, you, you're, you're already plugged into, you know, all the HR stuff. You know a lot of people usually, and, and, and so it's, a, it's, a, it's an easier step than yes. kind of switching companies. All right, excellent. So uh, one of the things that, so now you're working on OpenJDK, right? It's mm -hmm. one of the most important open source projects in the world. I mean, it's, you know, of course, you, you're, yeah. you, it's Java is the most important uh, and most used language in the world. OpenJDK is the basis of all of this. So, you know, there's mm -hmm. no doubt it's one of the most important projects. Now, uh, how, I, I, know, I know you actually work inside Oracle. Not most, most open source developers don't have the chance to work in the company that does the product. Mm -hmm. But how working on an open source project has been important for you? You know, is that like I a community <sighs> thing, or is just like learning, or does does it matter much? Or I, I mean, a couple things. I mean, both of those. So one is, um, and this is something that goes back to Bill Joy way in the early Sundays, uh -huh. which was, um, I forget, he had some very very crisp way of putting it, but the point was that. Um, yeah, so as so a company, Joy, Joy, Joy's law that says that that. Uh, you know, uh, you, you, uh, there's, always, there's always more smart people outside and yes, inside. Yes, yes, that's right. It. Yeah. That, that's, that's Joy's law, yes. Okay. Yes. Right. So, so yeah, you can be a company trying to, um, trying to work on something and, <coughs> you know, at, at a certain point it's very useful to be able to, if, if things are open, then you can discuss issues freely with anybody in this industry who's interested. Right. And so you can, you can gain the benefit of, of external expertise that way right. without having to hire people. And the fact is, for whatever reason, some people don't want to work at this company or they want to stay what they're doing or they want to remain independent or whatever, yeah. but they can still offer their expertise and a company like Oracle can still benefit from their expertise by working in open source. Right. Um, another thing is, I think that I, you know, certainly it's benefited my career. I have a lot of visibility. I mean, look <laughs> at this. I mean, I'm standing out there and Bruno says, come on over, we need to do an interview, yeah. right? So, so, that's, so that's nice. Uh, and I also like talking to people and meeting people. That's, uh -huh. that's very nice. Um, and um, just, just gaining the, certainly the expertise, but also the energy from people in the community is, is very helpful. I think one other thing is I've worked in, in, in the past, um, I've worked on proprietary projects and most, most projects, proprietary projects, not open source projects in companies are secret. Right. And so yeah. you have to mark things with proprietary, confidential. You go to a conference like this and it's like, well, what do you work on? Well, and you describe something in very general terms, but you can't really say anything. Uh huh. Um, but the great thing about working on open source is it's like, oh yeah, you know, I ran into this interesting problem. I'll describe it for you. In fact, here, let's, I'll show you the code. Look at this and see right. this test is failing here and look at the reason why it did, right? Yeah. And so, so, and you know, the fact that it's open source, you don't need to sign a non, I mean you, particularly right, yeah. you know, 
you know, Bruno Sosa, you have no formal relation. Well, maybe you do have an NDA with, or probably yeah, not. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you, you know, I mean, you know, if you ask somebody to sign an NDA, that's a huge barrier to yes, the flow yes. of information. Oh, yeah. And the fact that it's all open source, it's like, hey, you know, look at the code. Look at what we're doing here. And if they're interested, great. If they're, you know, if they're not, okay, well, we had a fun conversation. Cool. And, so and I think that's, that's very, very an enhancing and enriching uh, environment. Yeah, and about, about the secret that you're talking about, I, 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 it's probably not something that you need, but a lot of developers might, that are watching us might have this problem. You know, you, you, you go to, for, to an interview or for a company, for example, mm -hmm. and then you have to say, oh, I'm working on this project and that project, They're all secret things that you can't really show what you did. But if you're going right. to work on an open source project, you say, okay, I work on this, and my code is right here in OpenJDK, and I, you yeah. can actually, your, your curriculum yeah, is live, true. like it's a live curriculum online. Yeah. That's definitely true. Yeah. And, and also the, you know, the, I think with the internet, uh, and I think many things are long-lived, although, mm -hmm. you know, actually we're seeing these, you have to pay attention to this stuff. I'm thinking of JavaNet going away, uh -huh. but also Google Code, is, went away. Right. I think that's yeah, gone yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, right? it's gone so, now, yeah. So I think that's something to be careful of. I mean, it's great that it's out there, but you uh -huh. also have to understand, you know, it can go away if you're not careful or you need to move it somewhere. Right. So, yes, uh, but, but, but it definitely is a benefit that since it's all open source, you can, you can go to somebody else and say, look, I did that work and, you know, look at it if you want. You can even compile it or try it out. Yeah, so that's excellent. A, that's a big advantage. Excellent. Okay, so now, uh, you, you know, you've been working on open source project, you've been working on, on Java, and um, and we are here uh, talking with, with, de with developers and Java user groups, right? And is there any, 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 anything that those people can actually do uh, to, to improve their careers by working on open source project? I mean, I, I want to I wanna get, you know, because we're, we're discussing some ideas right. or things that we could do, right? I'm not going to ask about this right now, so don't, don't, jump, don't jump ahead, right? Okay. But, you know, uh, do you think that for people to participate in open source project, is that a hard thing or is it actually easy? I, I think it's it's pretty easy. Um, you ha you know, it, it depends on the project. It depends on your personality. But uh -huh. you have to you have to find a way to get yourself get out get yourself out there and visible and ask questions. Right. Um, but it was this thing about I mean you're talking about open source projects and how to how to get involved and in discussing with people and starting off with small projects, right? Mm -hmm. Like like documentation or writing right. tests, right? And um, I think it's true that most projects out there. Uh, most open source projects out there could benefit from better documentation, better right. tests. Um, you know, you know, maybe the core committers are interested in working on the next big feature, but there are these bugs here that they're they're less interested in or they haven't gotten to. And it would be nice if somebody could pick up, pick up, you know, little bug fixing and things mm -hmm. like that. So I cool. think that is a way for people to get involved in open source projects. That's excellent. So now, uh, you had an uh, an amazing idea, right? That I just love it. And we, you, you, you have not to told anyone yet, so it's like a, just a very small group of people. <laughs> now we're going to broadcast to the world, right? And uh, a way for people to actually get involved on the most important open source project in the world, that's the OpenJDK, right? Uh -huh. And it's an easy way that any developer around the world can participate, right? Right. So how are, we gonna, how are you going to help people get involved with OpenJDK then? Okay. So here's the idea. So one of the most important things in JDK 9 is modularization, the jigsaw, yeah, the module jigsaw system. project, right? Yeah. And if you look at the Java ecosystem, there are jar f the open source projects and jar files floating around everywhere in the internet. I mean, right. there's certainly Maven Central and a bunch of other places where people can go and get jar files and, and there's add there's to their applications. Hundreds of right? thousands of jar files out and there, what right? We, yes. what, yeah, exactly. I'm sure. <laughs> I don't know how many there are. But what we want to do in the JDK is modularize everything. Whoa, and yes. And so the idea is if there's an open source jar file, an interesting and fairly simple project is to take some open source jar file and modularize it. Right. And so I'm calling this idea adopt a module. Adopt a module. That's really cool. So basically, well, the idea is that you know we're gonna go get existing jar files for mm -hmm. open uh, for open source projects, and when you call modularize, what do you mean? Like open it up, rewrite the whole thing? No, no, no not what necessarily. Is it? Okay, so so now we'll dig into the jigsaw stuff a little bit. There, right. Yes. There are you know 
their jigsaw talks up and down the program you know, all week here at Java One, but I'll just very briefly say there, there are several different ways to modularize something. Uh -huh. So one is this concept of an automatic module, which is if you, if you read uh, Mark Reinhold's proposals mm -hmm. and, and so forth, he'll describe it in detail, but basically you can take an existing jar file and you, if you put it on the class path, that's how you get access to its classes. Now, there's in Java 9, there's a concept of a module path, which is where not, not not individual classes, whether they're not in jar files, but instead it is where modules reside. And if the, if, if the JVM recognizes, if the JVM sees a jar on the module path, uh -huh. it automatically turns that jar into a module and it gives oh. it a name based on the jar file name. Okay, so, so you're saying that actually you could just get an existing jar file, put it in the module path, mm -hmm. and then it becomes a module. That's right. So there's nothing to do. Well, you have to move it around. Right. But I think, but I think that, okay, so that's the first step. Yes. I think the next step is to test it. Because right. not okay. everything works in that mode. Cool, okay. Okay, I mean, there's some, I think there's, I think one of the difficulties that we're working through with Jigsaw uh -huh. now is, is frameworks that use lots of reflective access for things and they need access and so forth. So uh -huh. I think certainly to turn something into a module, yeah, it's that easy. Move it onto the module path instead of and the class and path. And test it, right? Yeah. But then test it, figure out how to work it and so forth, yeah. That's pretty cool. And and of and of course you could also write the module uh, info also. Right. Yeah. So another step is to unpack the jar file, uh -huh. but you don't have to recompile the, the the classes from source. But if you have the hierarchy of class files, uh -huh. you can add a module info dot Java and compile that in, and then pack up the jar file again and get a full fledged named module. Okay. Cool. So and, so you don't, and, and so what's interesting is you don't have to recompile the whole thing from source. Uh -huh. you c in fact, you can even take the, the existing binaries, which might have been, the class files might have been compiled for JDK 6. Right. Use the Java 9 compiler and add a module info to that. And so now you have a kind of, a, a, well, it's a modular jar file, which will run just fine on JDK 6. Mm -hmm. But if you put it onto the module path in JDK 9, it's a full-fledged module. Okay. So basically what you're proposing is uh, that Something that any developer can do, right? So, you know, mm -hmm. just download a jar file that you're already using your project, test it out uh, automatically on, on Java 9, right? Right. And then open up the jar file, create a, a module info, compile that with, with, with Java 9, and then you have, a, you have a module, right? So, I mean, any Java developer could do this, and you think this is, would be v valuable for Java 9? Yeah, I think so. I think what we're still working on Java 9. Uh -huh. I think ironing out kinks in the module system. If there are bugs, maybe there are things in the JDK that need to be fixed. That's, that's very good feedback to get that before we go to, uh, to the final release of JDK 9. Mm -hmm. I think it's good feedback for open source projects mm -hmm. because maybe there are open source projects out there who are saying, okay, well, we're working on our features and, and whatnot, but yeah, there's this module stuff. We haven't dealt with it. Uh -huh. Well, somebody comes along and says, here, I've done some things that turn your project into... Um, into a, you know your your jar artifact into a module. Now you can do that after the fact, or once you've done it manually after the fact, maybe they can say, oh, okay, all we can do is is put this into our build system this way, and we can produce a modular jar. And that's a way for a developer to to enhance an open source project by helping them saying, oh, okay, now we can not only we're producing our jar artifact, we're producing a module that can be used in JDK nine. Okay. So pretty cool. So actually, if you, if you see, we're doing a going full circle here right now because now you, a Java developer, you can, you can participate uh, on, on OpenJDK, a very important project. You can help your favorite um, uh, open source project, and that will help your career. And with that, you can take the risks and, 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 and new, new challenges like, like you did, like Stuart That's did, right. to improve your career and, and, and get a better position. So I mean, this is the perfect. This is the perfect situation for every developer. That's right. It's win wins for all around. It improves the community. It improves Java. It improves the open source projects, and it just helps the the entire ecosystem grow and and get better. Okay. So thank you very much. And if you're watching us here, uh, pay attention that we're gonna have more tips for you to improve your career. Stuart, thanks a lot. That was great. All right, great. Bruno. Thank thanks. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And I have to press here to stop.